smoking down there. Steve can't spot it, but the lemurs can clearly see the threat. Look, they're looking down here. What is it, a snake? A snake or something? Oh, got it. There, look, the cat. Look, there it goes. And they don't like it. They're very alarmed. Lemurs have got different alarm calls for different animals that threaten them. And they don't like that cat. And until it moves off, they're all on alarm. They're all on standby, ready to bolt. I don't know how long these ties are going to last for. <laughs> got a few leaks and a few bulges. So far, so good. Well, I'm heading for the spiny, dry forest to find the smallest lemur in the world. Baobab tree. Thousands of years old. Have a look at the size of this. One steamer. Look and chunk of flora. The African mainland also has baobab trees, but Madagascar has thousands of other plant species found nowhere else. As these unique environments evolved, animals that are adapted to survive with them developed at the same time. You'll find semi-arid country like this on every continent on Earth, but nowhere else will you find an amazing mix of plants and animals like this one. This forest type bites. And it's called a spiny forest for good reason. Every single place that you step, stand, or bump into has spikes. Even these little bushes are super spiky. The Deeria forest, unique to Madagascar. <laughs> Sparking. If you can imagine, they can jump right across this Dideria bush, this dry, spiny forest, without hurting themselves, without suffering incredible injuries. Crikey, I don't know how they do it. They've got pads on their hands, very dexterous fingers, so they can grip and hang on, just choo, 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 jump straight across. Oh. Did you see that? They can jump straight across. Have a look at this. Have a look how spiky these things are. And they can just grip, pull, push off, and go to the next vertical. Whoa. On the fringes of the spiny forest, it looks like prime reptile country, and Steve has a sixth sense with reptiles. If there are any here at all, he'll find them, no matter how well they're hidden. Check this out. Come on, mate. Come on now. Oh, look at this. It's a ground boa, a Demaril's ground boa. He's got his tail hooked back in those rocks. They love to eat rodents and even small lemurs if they can get hold of them. This spiny forest is totally alive with reptiles. We expect to find snakes here, but in daylight, Steve's next discovery is a rarity. Oh, look, look, look. There. It's a mouse lemur. The mouse and dwarf lemurs are the smallest of all lemurs. And they go into these vine thickets in this Dideria forest to take cover during the day. Or they'll go inside hollows. They're primarily nocturnal. And they've got to stay in this thicket until night time before they can come out and forage. Otherwise they get picked off by a bird of prey. Even at night they're not safe. Oh look! Here he is, look at him! What a classic chunk of evolution! To think that the lemurs, a primate species, is this big! Looks like a pair, there's two of them. This is the breeding season, the peak of the breeding season. So the male and female have come together. Woo, you never know what they'll be up to tonight. Gorgeous. What a bizarre forest type. I can't wait to come back here and take a look at some of these lemurs at night. 
But before that, there's a transport problem we have to handle. The bicycle's taken a real pounding on the rough tracks and off-road riding in some rugged country. It's been plaguing us with breakdowns for days, and Steve has to divert to the nearest village for repairs. Had a blowout. These marketplaces are great. Chock a block full of people. All sorts of gear. I reckon you could buy just about anything. Even with a few repairs, this isn't getting me anywhere. It's time to trade up to a later model of push bike. Thank you. Thank you very much. Something from the eh, 1950s. Travelling through Madagascar is like taking a step back in time. It feels like I'm way back in the 1800s. Yeah, that's right. I'm the crocodile hunter. Everywhere Steve goes, he attracts attention. It's got to be those shorts. Oh, wow. Jeez, I probably saved his life. Might have got run over. It looks like a collier bread, you know? I couldn't even tell you what species of, that, of snake this is. I've got no idea. It's got that beautiful dark coloration and look at those lateral bands that go down in its entire body. I reckon that it's a colubrid. Probably hasn't got any venom, frog eater, maybe little lizards, maybe even chameleons. You're lucky you didn't get run over, mate. Whoa, I'm just gonna let him go down here. He can slip down. Get off the road, dummy. Quick now, you stay off the road. Back to me pushy, and it's easy travelling downhill with a bit of wind. <laughs> and I'm still on target to make it back to the spiny forest in time to set up for spotlighting. Who knows what's going to emerge after dark? Sunset marks the changing of the guard. As daytime switches to night, so do the animals. The diurnal animals go to sleep as the nocturnal animals come awake and start to go into the forage mode, looking for a feed, hang out with their mates. And I've got the equipment, this low intensity head torch. It won't affect the lemur's nocturnal vision. Have a look at these dideria, these spiny plants sticking up like sentinels. At night, you need to be really careful in the forest because it's full of spikes, prickles, thorns. Virtually anything that could stab you will. Oh, have a look at this. Hey, little hedgehog. Hey, little hedgehog. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. What a little ripper. You're all right, little hedgehog. Now, the hedgehog is quite common through this spiny forest. You can see he hasn't got a whole stack of hair on his head, but he's got those whiskers so he can feel around with those whiskers just like a cat. They've got cute little ears, long nose to locate their food and have a look at the hair on his back. Really coarse like bristles. He's got little short feet. His bottom's pushing right into my finger. Look at him curled around my finger like that. Isn't he? Oh, you're all right. You're all right, little hedgehog. This is the first hedgehog I've ever seen in my entire life. What a score. What a little beauty. The hedgehog's quite common down here in the southern part of Madagascar, particularly in this spiny forest. It's a real shame there's not much of this forest left. It's all being destroyed. Otherwise, there'd be a stack of these. And he's got a little soft belly. Can we see your belly? There's his little tummy. And he curls his bottom up. <laughs> a hedgehog, you ripper. Oh man, that's cute. Look at that. Little, little hedgehog, little hedgehog. Hey, isn't he darling? Come on, mate. Well, let him go. Oh, look, he's coming out of his ball. He goes, wow, this is where I live, down here on the ground. There you go. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> 